Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday. Now, we are going to have an encouraging word for those of you who have people rising up against you, and it's undeserved. God wants to let you know it's not his doing. So I'm going to read to you from the book of Psalms. We're starting at chapter 69. Some of you have family members. Some of you have co-workers. Some of you have spouses or siblings that just can't take but a minute of you. And they're ready to get you out of the picture because you ruin the scene, the scenario of their life. And you just cause havoc. You cause them to be uh miserable they 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 get all bound up when they get around you and it's not that you're doing anything wrong we're going to get into that all right psalm 69 starting at verse 1 save me O god for the waters are coming unto my soul i sink in deep mire where there is no standing i am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. When I restore that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gates speak against me, and I was the song of the drunkards. Let's stop right there. You might wonder, what does that mean? I was the song of the drunkards. When you read everything that's been said, what, what David is saying is my own family. When you say my children's, my mother's children, you're talking your siblings are rising up against you. The zeal of your own house. That means family members are coming up against you. You're crying, you're weeping, you're, you're hurting. And people that sit at the gate, speak against you. Those are people in authority, people that are in a position where they can make or break you possibly. Then when it says, I was the song of drunkards, what that is talking about is, it's almost like if you could picture people sitting around the bar, sitting around the table, have drunk, and they're just making all kind of jokes about you and all kind of butt-in remarks, and and they're, they're, they're just... Uh, you are the the uh <laughs> you are the topic of conversation because you fascinate everybody and you fascinate everybody because half half of them don't even get you. They don't even have the mindset to be able to get you. And in some cases it is a level of jealousy. So let me share this real quick because it's really crazy how things come together for this message. But one thing that I had a conversation the other night, and that's coming to my mind, and what was being said was how husbands have an issue with a male from a school calling the wife. Now, this is what I have to say about that. Do you realize that the most suspicious people are usually the guiltiest? Hmm. Why? Because they judge other people based on what they would do. That's what the Bible means. Listen to this. The Bible is deep. God says 
to the pure, all things are pure. Which means if your heart, your soul, your spirit is pure, your intentions are pure, your motives are pure, your attitudes and feelings towards others are pure. They're good. They don't have any, any sly, slick, or wicked agendas. They're pure. Then, and your life is pure, then when you look at other people, you expect the best. Because you're giving your best, you assume others are doing the same. But listen to this. This is the, the flip side. When your spirit is foul, when your spirit mm, 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 is defiled, the Bible says, to the defiled, all things are defiled. So if you have family members, co-workers, church members that suspect you of being this, that, or the other, that suspect you of having an agenda that they don't like, and they start accusing you, and they start spreading lies about you, trust me, according to the Bible, they are the guilty ones, not you. Because if they were not that type of person, they would not suspect that type of behavior in you. Think about that. Those are the sly, slick, and undercurrents, the, the underflow, the, the uh, what do you call that when you're out in the ocean? And, and the riptide, those are the riptides of the soul. People don't see it because on the surface, the water looks nice. The water's reflecting the sun. Hello, you get me? Listen in the spirit and you hear what I'm saying. The water's reflecting the brightness, the beauty of the day. They reflect the birds flying in the air. So what you're doing is you've got a person who reflects God in in a, a religious format, they dress, they walk, they talk, they quack, they waddle, they know the word, they know the quotes, the quotes, they know the church jargon, they know how to speak professionally on the job, they know how to hold professional meetings and give loving lectures and professional sounding, intellectual sounding lectures. But the rick tie is loaded with soot. The soul, the spirit underneath in that heart is nastiness. It's ugliness. So you have to go to God because he already knows what you're going through. He understands your hurt. You have to go to God and understand that he will not only minister to you, he will not only lead you to scripture if you ask, he will also remove the hurt that you don't even deserve to be feeling because of the suspicious people, because of the people out there that are talking about you behind your back. And you don't have to defend yourself. Don't even go there. Don't even bother defending yourself. Leave that up to God. God will vindicate you. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You leave that in his hands. You mind your business and you take care of your of what God's put in your hand to do. You take care of your job. You handle your family business. You love. You forgive. You lay it on God's hands. The Bible says, come on, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, that kind of spirit, that it's an oppressive spirit. And if you're not careful, it will make you feel heavy, knowing that these people don't welcome you, knowing that these people are looking at you out of the side of their eye, knowing that these people are whizzy whizzy and behind their hand about you, spreading lies, spreading suspicious comments, snide remarks about you, casting judgment on you, casting darkness and suspicion on you, making you look bad in other people's eyes. Sowers of discord, trust me, God will handle that.
As long as you handle all of that misbehavior, all of that foul treatment, God's way, the way Jesus handled his enemies, God will raise you up and make you shine bright, baby. You don't have to do a thing. He'll handle it. He'll handle it. He knows how to shut the mouths of lions. He knows how to shut the mouths of the enemies. He said, those that speak lies, their mouths will be shut. He knows how to do it. So you don't have to cry. You don't have to sing the blues. You don't have to call five or ten people complaining about how this one did you, that one did, what, what that one said about you, what this one, how that one looks at you. You don't have to worry about that. Because not only is their day coming when God vindicates you, but your day is coming when God rises you up. Because who God promotes, no man can demote. No man can do that. When God's ready to promote you, baby, everybody's going to see it. And they're going to gnash with their teeth. Because God's going to make you shine bright. You hear me? So as long as you keep your spirit clean, Oh, yeah, God will pave a way ahead of you. And while they're acting all foul, ugly, and funky, trust me, God will handle that. He knows how to handle your enemies. So don't trip up and don't don't feel like you have to defend yourself. Listen, one day, I'm going to share this real quick. Years ago, when Milton and I were first dating, <laughs> it was the only time. In that, in that three and a half years we dated, and he never did it when we were married. But in the three and a half years we dated, one time I went over my friend's house, my neighbor, and he left me a message on my voicemail. He said, you couldn't wait to get your tail out of here to go sit up in that so-and-so's house. <laughs> he didn't cuss. He just used the word that wasn't pretty. Now, I realized he was feeling guilt. He was feeling jealous. He was feeling suspicious. So I never returned the message. And the next day he called. He said, well, did you have fun? I said, I had loads of fun. I never once defended myself. Never once. And you know why? Because I wasn't going to give it the honor. I let him know, believe what you want to believe, baby. I could care less. I don't have to explain myself. You go to God if you want to know what's up. <laughs> he never acted like that ever again because I never gave it credence. I never gave it that the attention. Well, I was just over there. We were just talking. No, no, I don't give an explanation. I know I'm not doing wrong. So you got to get your head together and get with God, get your spirit right. Because I don't have to explain a thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some of you are too busy wasting your energy, explaining yourself to somebody else who has a foul, suspicious spirit. No, don't give them that. Don't even give them the honor of doing that. Let them be suspicious. Let them think what they want to think about you. Let them say what they want to say about you. How did Moses handle it when Nathan and Abiram rose up against him? How did he handle it? I'll tell you how, they, how he handled it. When Nathan and Abiram were like, you know, you take too much upon you. You know, you, you, you know, you think you all that in a bag of chips. What makes you think you can hear God more than us? We, we can hear God too. You know, you ain't the only, uh, a cherry on the cake. Come on now. All right. There's the attitude. What did Moses say? We'll meet tomorrow and we'll let God decide who's who and what's what. I'm putting it all in my words so you understand what was really being said. So what goes down the next day? And that's why some of y'all that hook up with these sowers of discord and these gossipers and backbiters, you better watch yourself. Here's the, your warning. You better watch yourself because the same judgment God puts on those people that are rising up against somebody who does not deserve it. That same judgment can come on you or even worse. What happens? He opens up the earth when they meet. 
Nathan and Abiram, whoop, swallowed up. And what happened to the priests that hooked up, the God's servants that hooked up with Nathan and Abiram? Fire burned their behinds and boom, they were consumed just like that. While Moses stood there on God's side, and God making it very obvious, he was on Moses' side. You have to be careful how you rise up against God's people. Be careful how you cast judgment. Be careful how you whizzy, 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 whizzy. If I have an issue with somebody and I there's something about them I don't like, there's something about them I feel like ain't quite right, I talk to the Lord about it. And I ask the Lord to help me not cast judgment. But that person doesn't sit right with me, Lord. But I'm talking to God, the one who can change my attitude, change my heart. I'm not out there on the phone talking to sister and brother so-and-so. Did you notice how they, did you notice, mm -hmm, they think they're all that? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, honey, they ain't about nothing. God, love, where is it? Where is the Lord in that? Where is the love in that? Hmm. Where is your spirit and why? All right. Here's another thing I want to share with you. God told me this years ago. And this is for those of you who have people rising up against you. You have to constantly ask God to remove the hurt. Because hurt brings anger, anger brings resentment, resentment brings bitterness, and bitterness unchecked with, with the lack of forgiveness will harden your heart, baby. And before you know it, you won't want to do with any, anybody. You will just, you will just become this hollow, hard shell. You don't want to do that. So, and God says, if you don't forgive them, he won't forgive you. Always remember that. So here we are, you have a situation where God is explaining, and this is what will happen if you go to him and start asking questions, because sometimes we don't understand why they are rising up against me. You know, we, we have those issues. At one time I said, well, Lord, maybe I'm too playful. Maybe I'm too silly. Maybe I joke too much. Maybe I need to change my personality. Would you help me? Because I can tell I get on a lot of people's nerves. I can tell I turn a lot of people off. This is like 30 years ago. The Lord sat me down. I mean, I felt it in my spirit. I sat down and I just waited because I felt like he was, I felt he was going to say something. And he didn't say it verbatim in words, but it rose up in my spirit, a whole understanding I didn't have before. And the understanding came like this. I have done a lot of inner healing in you. I have delivered you from the root of rejection. Two hours of dry heaving. I have delivered you from constant repetitive hurts and verbal attacks, total acts of disrespect. I have delivered you from that and enabled you to forgive at every turn. And you have been determined to have to show mercy. You have a confidence level that I gave to you. In spite of all the insecurities you grew up with, I removed those and replaced it with a level of confidence. So when you walk in the room, you have an air of confidence. That comes from me. Do not apologize for it. You also have a sense of humor. That comes from my joy. I have given you joy above your fellows, gladness above your fellows. He led me to scripture on that one. Don't apologize for your joy because they don't have what you have. So what God showed me is when other people see the confidence in you, when other people see the joy and the strength in you, and they know how they may not acknowledge, but they are very insecure. They are threatened by a person with confidence. They are threatened by a person with gifts and abilities that I gave them. What ends up happening is if they already have that defiled spirit about them, 
they will give you a bad name because of what I did in you. Don't you back up. Don't you retreat. Don't you curl yourself inside and, and hide who you are. You be yourself with boldness because everything that you exude came from me. Don't apologize for it. I'll deal with them. You be who I made you. And be comfortable in who you are. Not everybody's going to like you. Because not everybody is secure. Not everybody likes themselves. And if they hate themselves or they're uncomfortable with themselves, guess what? They're definitely not going to like you. Get over it, baby. That comes with the package. So, what I want to share with you is no matter who rises up against you, no matter who tries to quell who you are and what you're able to do, no matter who tries to erase you out of the picture, when God's ready to put you up and put you in, no man can remove it. No man can undo that. Let me read some more of this scripture here. Go with me. Two, I've got four of them. I don't know if I'm going to read all of them, but let's see. Psalm 63. I think that's Psalm 63. Yeah. Psalm 63. I have all my scriptures on my left. I reserve them when the Lord leads me to them. All of these are like constant re reaffirming of, of what God is saying. Okay, listen. This is some more what some of you are feeling. Uh, starting at verse one. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. You know, you can be living in a dry environment, y'all. You can be living in an environment where there is nobody there to replenish you. There is nobody there to reaffirm who you are. There is nobody there telling you what a blessing you are. Why? Because they resent what a blessing you are, because they know that what you are is what they are not. Verse two, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou has been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul follows hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Do you hear me? Don't worry about them. As they say in some of these uh, programs with that heavy New York accent, don't worry about it. Don't even trip it, baby. Don't even give it a second thought. When I feel like I'm being come against, and, and it hurts. It's, it's natural for it to hurt. But it doesn't have to stay there. It doesn't have to cut deep. It doesn't have to bleed. And it doesn't have to set up an infection in your spirit. Because God can take the hurt out before it draws blood. I'm telling you this. It's true. You have to constantly stay in God's face. Lord, please take the hurt out. You got to, that's got to be one of your, your, your constant prayers to God, because the more gifted you are, the more God has done in your life, in your soul, in your gut, in your psyche, guess what? And the more testimonies you have, the more people will resent you because of what they didn't get. And they hear you like you bragging on yourself. No, you're bragging on God. But because of where they are or where they are not, to the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled, 
all things, even your testimony, even your love, even your, your goodness is defiled in their mind. They cannot see the good because they're filtering it through a defiled spirit. Do you hear what, what I'm saying? They can't understand what's going on with you and God because to them it's got to be phony. It's got to be a nap. There's got to be a hidden agenda. Why are you doing this? Why are you so nice to that one? Why are you smiling in their face? You must have a crush on that one. You must have, you must want money over here. You must be vying for position. You must be, you must be, you must be, you must suspicion. See, a lot of, a lot of people, especially those in the, in the uh, church in Christendom, they love using the word discernment. Oh, I discern in my spirit something's not right. But guess what? They get two words confused. And that's why I say to all of you, look it up in the dictionary. Discern means one thing. Suspicion means another. And they're not the same. Some of you have suspicious spirits. You're just suspicious. You're foul in the way you look at people, your outlook on people. You're not looking at them through the lens of love. You're looking at them through the lens of jealousy. You're looking at them through the lens of resentment. You're looking at them through the lens of an inferiority complex. You're looking at them through the lens of self-hatred. So if, if, if you're that jacked up, there's no way anybody can be that together. So what do you do? You play, you downplay it. You stick pins in the balloon because you can't stand the glory someone else can get. Can't stand it. Got to be something wrong with it. Something wrong with you when you feel that way about everybody. That's not discernment, baby. Discernment is not suspicion. And if you are suspicious, you need a lot of inner healing and you need to go to God for it. He's the only one. But if you don't ever decide to acknowledge it, you will get worse and worse and you will be with one of God's main enemies because he hates sowers of discord. Those that take a person who has a clean reputation and dirties it up, smuts it up because of what their attitude is and has other people who originally like that person looking at them out the corner of their eye because they're listening to the smut that you're spewing out. You have become a sower of discord. Watch your mouth. Watch your attitude. Watch your feelings. You got to watch yourself. Because God will have to one day handle you like he handled Nathan in the Bible. See, we think because he's not doing those magnificent, those, those horrendous judgment calls like he did back in the day. That we can slide, slip sliding away. Oh, yeah, baby. Slip sliding away. And we think we can get away with whatever we want. We 21, three times seven. We can say what we want, feel what we want. God understands. I'm just, you know, hey. No, check it out, baby. God understands, but he ain't got to deal with your mess. Now I'm talking to the perpetrators of the ones that hurt these people that are minding their own business. But now I'm addressing the ones who are being hurt by these suspicious, insecure, small-spirited people. These little Napoleons running around with a big stick trying to show how powerful, how mighty, how phenomenal they are, trying to show the world what a great big giant they are when they know. They're casting a giant shadow, but they're small in their own eyes. So they want you to think they're big so they can feel better about themselves. And they want you to think the other people who are big are small so that you don't measure so little next to them. It, it's all a whole psychological game. Okay, let's go to Psalms 62. That's right. Psalm 62. <laughs> All right. 
And this is what you need to do when you're praying to God. Those of you who are being hurt by these people, I'm telling you, it works for me every time. <laughs> Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Let me, let me, let me allude to this a little further. Let's take this a little further. With salvation comes a lot of things. So let me say in my words, okay? And now I'm talking from experience. From him cometh my peace. From him cometh my love, my reassurance. From him cometh my encouragement. From him cometh my inner strength. From him cometh every ability I have. From him cometh my life. He only, verse 2, he only is my rock, my salvation. He is my defense. Not you. Shut your mouth. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. I don't care what they say, y'all. They can't move you out what God has moved you into. How long will ye imagine mischief against the man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. See, God knows this. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. I was married to a wonderful man, Milton DeVore. I couldn't have asked for a better man, honestly. But my expectation was not from him. I didn't wait. My soul didn't wait on my man. Mm -mm. No. When I was hurt at the hair salon, I would go to Milton for a hug. But I had to go to God to get the hurt out. You hear me? I had to go to God to do the deep work that uprooted all that poison, all the toxins. My husband couldn't do that for me. As fine and tall and strong and sexy and all that as he was, he couldn't do that for me. He wasn't my God, y'all. I went to God to handle the big stuff. I went to Milton for the little pacifier. Put your arms around me. Take me in your arms and rock me, baby. That's all he could do for me. And it felt nice. But I had to go to God to get the deep work, to get that deep stuff up and out. Some of you, you need to quit talking to your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your brother, your sister, your best friend, the person down the street. You need to hang up that phone and regurgitate your pain to God. Lay it all on him. There's no more sunshine. There's only heartache. Because all you've been living for is gone. Now you're a victim once again. Crying comes easy. Now that it's over, you try to forget, but still the hurt won't heal. It's more than you can bear. When the burden gets too heavy and the nights get all oh so lonely, God will bring you through if only you lay it all on him. When you feel your world's been shaken and the best of you's been taken, know you haven't been forsaken lay it all on him you lay it all on him that's what the song says lay it all 
on him. You don't carry that crap. When you're a little kid, you ever play hot potato or I forget what they call a little ball game when you're in elementary school and they say, oh, it's hot and they throw it to you and you throw it off. You have to. OK, you see the sock. Somebody throws you their junk. You, you just like volleyball. You get it out of the way. You get it out of the way. You get it off of you as quick as possible. You don't sit there and hold it and think about it and ponder on it and 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 manipulate it and say, oh wow, this thing really hurt. Look at how that hurt and that hurt like that. And no, 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 you don't dwell on that stuff because God can take it out. Life is so much easier when your soul waits only upon God, when your expectation is only from him. It's verse six, he only is my rock, my salvation. He, he, not you, not your mouth, not your cuss words, not how you can slice and dice somebody down to the ground, not how you can backbite them behind their back. No, he is my defense. I shall not be moved. He is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge. He's my covering. He's my painkiller. He's the, the armor I wear when the darts come. I don't have to feel any pain. You don't have to feel it, y'all. It may sting at first, but you give it that real quick with the painkiller, the almighty painkiller. Seven. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. You don't get on the phone and pour your heart out to Lynn. Pour your heart out to Jeanette. Pour your heart out to Peter. Pour your heart out to Rashad. Pour your heart out to Mariel. Pour your heart out to Mama. Pour your heart out to Papa. Pour your heart out to Peggy. Pour your heart out to Paul. Pour your heart. No, you pour your heart out to God. Why? He is the only one. Who can remove the hurt? Surely, now getting godly counsel is one thing. But dumping? No, you do all your dumping on God. Nine, surely God of low, surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighted in vanity. Ten, Trust not in oppression. Don't get caught up in that mess. That's their problem, not yours. And become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Enjoy it, but don't set your heart on it. 11. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. So no matter what you're going through, handle your heart, guard your heart, cover it, bathe it in the blood of Jesus, bathe it in and saturate it in the word of God. Let God lift your spirits. Let God lift that load off of you. It's not for you to bear. That's for Jesus to carry. Yes, when he hung on the cross and he died, he said it is finished, but he never finished doing the work. Daily he's working in you. Daily he's delivering you. Daily he's healing you. Daily he's counseling you. Daily he's your prince of peace. If you go to him and pour your heart out to him. I'm done. I hope you heard it. God bless you. As you learn to lean on him. <laughs>